Hi everyone, welcome to my channel, Andra Makes. Today I'm going to show you how to make a minky and flannel baby blanket without having to worry about your minky shifting, getting off center, not catching all the seams. This is a game changer. I learned this technique from my friend Kelly several years ago. I have not used any other technique since. This is amazing. It works every time. I think you'll love it. If you do end up making a blanket using my tutorial, please let me know. Either let me know in the comments or if you're on Instagram and you make one, tag me, let me know. I would love to see it. But I'm so excited about this. You will love it. Here is the blanket I made during the tutorial and I'll step back so you can see it all. This is flannel, has cute little elephants on it. And then the other side is minky, which we know can be a bear to sew because it is shifty, that shifty little devil. But here's what you need to do for this size blanket. You need to get one and one third yards of minky and only one yard of flannel. Your minky and your flannel need to be different sizes. Your minky needs to be larger. Do not alternate or skip that step. For what I'm gonna show you, you have to get one and one third yards of minky and only one yard of flannel for it to work. The idea, here's the secret, spoiler alert, your minky needs to be larger than your other fabric. That's what is the key to this magic. So trust me on that. And also, I highly recommend using curved basting pins. That's what they look like. It has a curve on there. I'll pop up a picture if it's not coming across very well. Highly recommend these. It also makes things so much easier. I'm assuming you can use regular sewing pins. I don't, so I don't know if you would have the same successful outcome. I'll leave that up to you, but I do highly recommend these curved basting pins, and they do need to be curved. It just makes your life easier. If you're a quilter, you already know this. This is how you baste a quilt sandwich, but the curve allows you, when you're pinning, to dip down into the double layers or triple layers, if you're making a quilt, of fabric, and it's just easier ergonomically faster, everything. So I highly recommend using those. I'll put a link in the description box. It's my affiliate link for Amazon. If you click on that, I will earn a teeny tiny pennies commission from Amazon. You don't have to click on the link. You can find those in Hobby Lobby, Joanne, anywhere that sells sewing supplies online, whatever. But I do highly recommend using those. Also, a walking foot helps if you already have a walking foot definitely use it you don't if you don't have one you can still totally make this but a walking foot just makes it even easier than it already is i know there are tons of techniques for sewing with minky out there this is just the one that works for me if you have one that you like that works for you that is fantastic but this is what i use and what i recommend and what i want to show you guys who may not already know about it or if you use another technique. And not only is this frustration free, you don't have to worry about your minky shifting or slipping or not catching the seam or anything like that. Here's another bonus, no measuring or cutting. You will be trimming, but that is different than measuring and cutting. So stay with me and I'll show you what I mean. So that just adds to the fun and efficiency of making these baby blankets. So go ahead and have your one and one third yards of minky fabric, your one yard of flannel fabric, and go ahead and square the sides of your flannel fabric and cut off the selvages. If you don't know how to square fabric, there are tons of videos on YouTube showing you how to do that. So go ahead and have your flannel squared and the selvages cut off. And then let's get started on this blanket. Okay, here's the key and the magic to this entire thing. You want your minky larger than your flannel. That is going to make your life so much easier. And you want your minky right side up, spread it out nice and flat and smooth, and then put your flannel right side down on top of your minky. And see where I have the border 
of the minky. There's mine hanging off the table. That's the key. You want a lot more minky, well not a lot, but you want more minky than flannel. So make sure you have good borders there of your minky and they're not butted up against each other with the flannel and then we're going to start pin basting. I recommend starting pinning in the center of your blanket and working your way out and a good rule of thumb for distance between the pins is your fist. So you want about a fist distance between the pins. So start in the center and work your way out. I've already got some on the edges just to show you what it's going to look like. And I like to go ahead and spread all my pins out on the blanket. That's just a time saver also. So I'm going to get all this pinned and then I will come back and show you what that looks like. Okay, here's another beauty of this method. I have it pinned as far as I can go that it's on my work surface. So you see I have this down here that's unpinned that's hanging off the table. So now that everything is very secure and I have that extra width of the minky, when I pull it up to put this area up on my work table, I don't have to worry about anything shifting because the minky is larger and I have it secured well with those pins. So now I'm going to pull it up and put this area on my work table and then continue pinning. Okay, I have the entire thing pinned and now let's go over to the sewing machine. Okay, just pick any side you'd like to start on. I do like to start in the middle and not toward a corner and a walking foot, I recommend that. If you don't have one, no worries, you could totally do this. Whatever foot you're using, you want to line up the right edge, as you're looking at it, of your foot with the edge of your flannel. And that's going to be your seam allowance. So that keeps it super duper easy and not frustrating also. I do recommend no matter what foot you're using that you increase your stitch length to about a three. So what you're going to do is start sewing. You're going to sew a few stitches and then back stitch. And then sew all the way around your blanket, removing the pins as you get to them. You want to leave the inside of your blanket pinned. Just remove the ones on the edges as you're sewing. Until you get about, we started here, so back here, about four to five inches, you want to stop and back stitch, and that will leave about a four to five inch opening to be able to turn your blanket right side out. So just make sure you back stitch when you begin and back stitch when you end, leaving a four to five inch opening. And you want to have your blanket supported. You don't want it hanging off your table. It'll make it a lot easier if it's supported and not hanging down. So if you don't have anything to the left of your machine, grab a side table or an ironing board or anything like that, and or chairs, whatever you have, make it work, no biggie. And just make sure that the left side of your blanket is supported and not hanging down and dragging off your work surface. So sew all the way around your blanket, leaving a 45 inch opening, back stitching at the beginning and end, and then meet me back here. Okay, here's where I started stitching when I started sewing my blanket, and I've come all the way around, and here's where I've stopped. I started here, back stitched, I stopped here and back stitched. So now I have this opening. Okay, once you've sewn all the way around your blanket and have left your opening, I want you to trim away just the minky, the excess minky. Don't trim any of your flannel. You can see I already have mine trimmed. No minky anywhere except I'm going to show you what not to trim on the minky. This area right here, leave this extra minky. This is the opening that we left, 
and I just have my scissors pointing to it because my thread's wide and you might not be able to see it. But that's the four to five inch opening that we left. So do not trim that minky all the way. Leave about a half an inch width of it. But otherwise, trim off all the other minky. Don't trim the flannel. Just trim the minky flush with the flannel. And then leave this right here, the half inch of the minky there. And then turn your blanket right side out and then meet me back here. Okay, here's the blanket right side out. I like to run my fingers and hand along all the seams just to make sure that everything caught. And then use your fingers to poke out the corners really nicely and smooth everything out. Get those seam allowances as flat as possible. And then you want to find your opening. And here's mine. And where we left that extra minky, it naturally just curls to the inside. See, there's the opening. So that's why we left that extra to be able to tuck that in. So you want to pin or clip that opening together and that will close up the seam and then either hand sew this opening closed or you can top stitch all around your blanket and that will close up that opening also. And then your blanket is finished. And how easy and non-frustrating was that? And then here is that nice chunk of minky that we had left over that we trimmed off. And I like to use this for matching bibs, washcloths, burp cloths, and use the exact same technique that I just showed you. Just make sure what other fabric you're using is smaller than the minky. So cut out that pattern piece in your flannel or quilting cotton, whatever you're using. Cut that out. Put it on top of your minky. Don't cut your minky. And just sew around the flannel or the quilting cotton or whatever and then trim off the minky. So use that exact same process for whatever you're going to make with minky being the other fabric. And this makes such a sweet and meaningful and useful and practical baby gift set. A blanket, matching burp cloths, matching washcloths, and a matching bib. All frustration free with that technique for sewing with Minky. How easy, frustration free, and fun was that? It's a foolproof way of sewing with Minky. And like I said in the tutorial, you can use what was left over to make matching burp cloths, washcloths, bibs, using that same technique. Just have your other other fabric besides your minky smaller than your minky. Sew around your other fabric, trim your minky, and you are good to go. I do have a coffee account and I will link that in the description box if you'd like if you enjoyed this, if you learned something, if you'd like to leave me a little tip, I'll put that in the link in the description box. If you can't, no worries, no problem at all. And also, if you have any questions, maybe something I didn't cover, let me know and I will answer as best I can. Thanks so much for watching. See you next time. Bye!